yes, here I am in Spain, España. Como estas? Ah, uh, yes. Buenos dias. I'm here for the first day for the cop, for me anyway, not the first day I was a cop. First day at the cop for me. My second cop, all right, now I'm policia, okay? And so this is different. This is the Council of Parties with the United Nations. And so y'all see the sun has not yet fully risen, but I'm on my way this chilly morning to head on over and fight climate change. So give you a little bit more insights as we journey. Peace. Bye. who are representing very different parts of the cultural heritage world to share with us their thoughts on how cultural heritage can drive climate action and to give us their perspective on why they think a global heritage network is necessary. So first up, I'd like to introduce Queen Quet, who's chief des, chief des of the Gullah Beachy Nation, um, to speak on her perspective um, of why cultural climate action is important. of the United States is the Gullah Geechee Nation. So honey, you had to be the crack with like a dish and like a letter. That's my home language, which is Gullah. And so in Gullah, understand, what did you 
what I mean by sea level rise? Because living on islands, the sea rises every day for us, twice a day. We have high tide, we have low tide. So we're saying, what is people that they're talking about something that already exists? To us as people indigenous to the coastline, we couldn't get where you all were coming from. And then we finally realized you all finally found words for what we had been seeing, what we had been talking about, what we had witnessed for over two or three decades already. But when we said that our culture is inextricably tied to the land, there is no difference between me, then the water, and then the land. We're all one. No one in the political offices got what we were saying. In fact, they said that we were the emotional natives. And so I was happy to meet some people who thought that the emotions of the natives was valuable. That they actually value a word we value, culture. They valued another word that we valued, community. Because to us, it unifies you, that which you have in common. And so, our thing was finding this commonality with this new network that was from around the world of other people who know cracky teeth like Alicia Tall Tall like Mama Tiller and look at me just now and think like that and like, eh? When? Right? Like y'all were looking at me a while ago wondering, will she stop doing that? What's going on right now? Right? We were looking at the rest of the world the same way. Would they stop the actions they're doing right now? that are having the kind of impact on our coast that we're seeing. And then slowly, I'm a computer scientist, so slowly people started getting programmed enough to start dialoguing in a way that we did overstand and understand what they were saying. And they understood and understood what we were saying as well, because now we had in common this thing called climate change. And again, we're the ones that need to change with the climate, is what we saw. And we again couldn't get it as to why the Western world didn't know what that was. And then they said to us, there's a couple terms we use. They call resilience and adaptation. And again, in Gullah, we don't have those words. So I had to figure out what did they mean by those? And then I found out we're the embodiment of resilience. Because for over 400 years on the sea islands, we have had to shift and change because why? We're in the hurricane zone. So you talk about something you can't really predict, it's gonna happen. Wow, how do you remain there in the face of all of that? Prior to the Weather Channel, my ancestors did it. So there's no way we can't do it now, you see. But every time we said, we have something we can offer you. There's something we'd like to talk to you about. There's something that we live that we think you all should learn from, that you could use. People said, here we go, the emotional <laughs> natives again. We don't do it that way. Could you write it? In fact, would you do a PowerPoint presentation? I said, the power is for us to make the point in our own language, in our own tradition, in our own culture, and on the coast, so you can see what we see. And then maybe we'll have community because we'll unify together over this common thing that we all can reverse. If we all caused it, then if we all come together, we should all be able to defeat it. And so here came this new network saying, well, you know what, I think you all have a point. I think the other indigenous people of the world have a point. I think the other coastal people of the world have a point. You all live on the front lines, and I like to say on the front shoreline of these changes. So your TK, and I was like, and what's that an abbreviation for? Your traditional knowledge means something. It's valuable. I said, wow, you think? I said, it took you a little while to figure that one out, huh? And they said, yes, but we got it now. Would you come and talk to us? 
And at first, because everything in the Western world is linear, like how these seats are in rows, we didn't want to enter that because everything in my world is circular, like these tables here. And we like to sit in the circle. The same way our cast nets go out into the ocean, they become circles. And then they go down and they lift up that which nurtures the spirit. We didn't see that same thing coming through the lines. And we were lining up to do the next wrong thing on our coast. We wanted them to enter our circle. Said we could have crack a teeth with one another and like that and now put a few things while we the door. So we could eat and talk and learn from one another in that circle. So when this network said, why don't you join us? Why don't you be a part of it? We're going to take action at the Global Climate Action Summit. I said, now you're talking. Because I don't like just a bunch of talking. The Western world loves talking. Y'all love writing. Y'all love death by PowerPoint. I said, but if we're going to do something, I'll be there. And I was in San Francisco. And they said, next, we're going to the cop. I said, you know, us and cops don't get along that well. What you talking about exactly? They said, no, COP25. I said, okay, I'll be there. And I'm here, and I'm honored to be here with other people of the world who have the same type of passion for what we're fighting for here. That just like in the Gullah Geechee Nation's flag, you see that the tree is in the center. But do you see what that tree is made of? What is it? Anybody? Can y'all tell? What's the tree made of? What? People, exactly. Right, people. Our tree is a family tree. It's made of people. It's rooted in our coastline. It represents the Igbo, Mandika, Maleke, Yuliba, Gorla, Gizi, Mendi, Temni, Fik, Ibibio, Yamasi, Kusako, Kri, the people who make up who I am, as I say, who we be. We be Galagichi, anointed people. The blue represents the water, as well as the indigo that my ancestors were enslaved to grow. The green represents the land. And the gold represents the Carolina gold rice that we grew by the tons, but it also represents the sun, the brighter day, and what they called us, black gold. So knowing that richness, and knowing that that richness now has value to another group, that our TK is what we can invest in this new network, I said, I'm there, and I'm going to be a part of the Climate Heritage Mobilization Network because they value me, they value community, they value culture, and that's the kind of change in the climate of discussions about resiliency and adaptation that we need. And so I definitely will be a part of those discussions, be a part of that work, and be a part of that journey. And I just thought it a blessing to see the action plan because one of my favorite numbers is the number seven. And that's because the number seven is one level of completion of a septenary. And there were seven points out of eight that we're already doing in the Gullah Geechee Nation. So hopefully in our dialogue at the end of our session, we'll be able to crack the teeth with one about a little bit more about that and see like an edit and what we're gonna do, where I'd be. And so in the meantime, those who joined with us to work in collaboration, we came up with this anthology called We Be Gullah Geechee, Cultural Capital and Collaboration, so that we could work with universities and scientists and politicians and others who usually come in and look at us as a specimen, and we become part of this slideshow, would know how to do research in our community in a respectful manner, and that they would know what we value even when our voices couldn't be there or they couldn't come into our circle, that these words could go around the world like I've done to do here today. So thank you, thank you for having me. And I pray that we all become one huge global community with climate heritage mobilized. Peace and blessings, everybody.